Mr. Speaker, I'm an educator. Many of my colleagues here in this chamber have different varying professions. We have business owners, farmers, computer experts, medical professionals, and to the chagrin of many, lawyers in this body. Hey. Hey. So, Mr. Speaker, I was glad to serve on the Education Committee where I can put my education and background to use and to try and shape the policy that Virginia will implement to educate the next generation of Virginia youth. But as I sat through committee meeting after committee meeting, I saw that there's a vast difference about the direction some of us think education should be heading and the way others think. I watched as bill after bill was brought that mandated hours of instruction that had nothing to do with helping students catch up from the COVID-induced shutdown learning loss that our students in Virginia experienced. Learning loss that we now know could have been mitigated by getting students back into the classroom sooner. That indeed virtual learning was not learning at all. We listened to teachers unions who fought to keep classrooms closed as private schools remained opened and their students remained in class. Now we want to let those same teacher unions dictate how much teachers get paid. Teaching is the most noble of professions since without teachers no other profession is possible. It's the teachers that teach those business owners, farmers, and computer experts that I mentioned earlier. But Mr. Speaker, letting the teachers union dictate the prevailing wage of teachers in Virginia is a disaster waiting to happen. Oh, it sounds nice to pass the idea of teachers being paid at the national average, but Mr. Speaker, that doesn't give a lot of help to counties in rural Virginia that simply can't afford such a price. You saw, while we're passing a bill that certainly sounds nice on the surface, the physical implication for many counties will be devastating. What can easily be afforded in places like Loudoun County will bankrupt places like Patrick County, where the mandate to pay national average will double compensation for some teachers and administrators, and then it will implode the budget as a state passes yet another unfunded mandate to these localities. The governor's introduced budget had record K-12 funding, and still this mandate would crush many counties. But teacher pay is only part of the problem, Mr. Speaker. We have to provide so much more support for teachers than just money. I had a teacher reach out to me over the summer, begging us to allow them to discipline and provide structure to their schools and to their classrooms. Prior to my arrival in this body, we sent to schools other changes to school discipline made in the name of equity to where students couldn't even be held accountable for not going to class and staying in the hallways, causing mischief and chaos. To make matters worse instead of better, there were bills this year that said no student could be suspended or expelled unless some alternate form of intervention had been done. Yes, you heard that right, that a student could strike another student, they could curse a teacher out, and we were going to mandate by law they couldn't be taken out of that classroom. Shame on us, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as part of the review of the budget, I highlighted the defunding of the Diploma Plus program. It was a program that allowed all Virginia students access to dual enrollment classes and that to encourage them to work towards credentials in essential fields and to be workforce ready upon graduation. But since the funding was stripped, those students that are from less prosperous areas will continue to go without while their counterparts in the more affluent areas have access to these programs. We love to talk about equity, but when given the opportunity to provide it, we defunded it. Another place that money was removed from the House budget that differed from the governor's budget concerned lab schools. 60 school divisions, that's over 45% of the divisions in Virginia, were actively developing these innovative models to give students even more options for success. Yet we once again fall back into the old standard that one size fits all, and we won't form alternatives that might actually show that there are better ways to educate students than the way we've always done it. So we defunded these lab schools before they even really got a chance to get off the ground, lest we actually see that they might work better than what we've always done. Mr. Speaker, though I've only been here in the House a couple of years, it's becoming more and more obvious that we have a vast chasm of difference in how the sides of this chamber think education of our youth is best accomplished. Our side of the aisle is fighting for schools where the students and staff feel safe and teachers are supported to maintain order and discipline in the classrooms. That when students refuse to follow rules, they are removed and the students who want to learn are allowed to learn in peace. That when public school is not the best fit for a student, that the parents are afforded the resources and options to make a different choice. 
that focus is given to programs like Diploma Plus that benefit all students, not just those that reside in certain zip codes. Mr. Speaker, we can do better. No, Mr. Speaker, we must do better. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.